You know anything about backwards masking? Maybe messages recorded backwards in songs? Yeah, or on the general's answering machine. Check this out. <laughs> been a while and I am revisiting my most popular video which is a build for Shadow of War Wrath Giver Slaughter Star. This is a conquest uh, driven set. PvP high level conquest. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get the gold uh, rating on a, like a quick conquest and this build is good for that. Maybe not the best but it is certainly a really good Wrath Giver set. And I wanted to take a look back at the build to see what things I would do differently. Uh, shout out to Leo. Uh, Leo is another YouTube channel, does really good content on this. So I got together with them to discuss the build. Went back and learned some few things. So we're going to go over the equipment again, what changes I would have made. Uh, we're going to go over the skills, uh, what things I've done differently, as well as what stuff I've learned how I got the equipment. Really, that's another video, but another video coming up soon. How to use Cheat Engine, basically. I didn't get this stuff legitimately. Uh, and then we're gonna close it off with just a demonstration of the build, uh, just a, a full run, uninterrupted. So let's start off with inventory. And before I go over the specific components, you can see the stuff in the levels there. Let's just talk about the set bonuses for the slaughter set, because that's kind of the main focus of the build. and. I've learned some things about it that I need to correct from the previous video. Uh, slowly drains health, but briefly increases damage by 40% after a drain or a dominate. First thing I wanted to look into is whether all drains or dominates are included in that. Like, uh, I didn't do real scientific testing, but I did do testing on this, and as far as I can tell, all of it applies. The other elephant in the room is, is duration. How long does this thing last? It's at least five seconds because I can tell that a damage buff is occurring. It's hard to tell exactly when it cuts off. Five seconds, you see that for like uh, the Mask of the Undying gives you a five second uh, damage boost for 33% damage. This buff is very similar to that. We're talking at least five seconds. It might just be that. I'm kind of thinking it might be up to 10 seconds. It does seem to last from when I would do it to when I would start testing the damage. Uh, it, it's possible this goes up to 15, 20 seconds, but I really don't think so. This is a very short duration buff. Kind of, you should have a mindset of using it similar to Mask of the Undying, which is you drain right before you start wailing on a captain, and you're going to lose DPS by trying to re-up the buff. The goal of this set is to drain and dominate captains, so once you do that, then you go on to the next one, you steamroll. If it's convenient to do it already, then you're just having that damage buff while you do it. It's certainly not the best part of this set, and I can tell you this set is not worth running just with two pieces and that drain dominate thing. Best part of this build is the next bonus, the four out of four. Followers, allies nearby, increases your damage 40%, but, but their health slowly drains. Previously, I thought that this was just allies you created. Turns out, it is everything. It is literally everything, as far as I can tell, because I've literally, in all different game modes, uh, Conquest, as well as just walking around the map, if you just walk around the map and hang around allied units that you had nothing to do with, they will lose health. If they have a health bar, you can see it decrease. If they don't, and you just hang around them, they just will eventually die. I think it's fair to say that whenever you were killing your allies, you're getting that 40% attack buff. And the other big part of this is that in a format like conquest when you constantly have allies near you and you're capturing you know these points you are basically always going to have a 40 percent damage buff like 99 percent of the time so this is actually a really good set for conquest uh so that's about the set bonuses now let's go to the different equipment pieces wrath giver has changed i have changed the secondary bonus to 15 percent increased health increased damage when health is full I w previously went with a uh, crit hit rate because that was good inside and outside of Wrath. You're really not going to be doing damage when you're outside of Wrath. When you're outside of Elven Wrath, you're just trying to gain Wrath to get back into Elven Wrath. So 15% damage is better than increased crit hit rate because it increases your damage when you're doing crits, when you're not. You have so many 
like gain HP when enemies die, you're constantly draining enemies. There's really no issue with having full health when you're in Elven Wrath. Uh, Dagger has not changed, crit hit damage is still fantastic, even better with this iteration of the build. Five might gain on critical hit. This has changed for the bow. Uh, really, this is just the secondary that's gonna happen more often. It, this is the one benefit that's most flexible and also has the least amount of impact. You're not really trying to gain might outside of Elven Wrath, as crazy as that sounds. You can more or less just leapfrog the might mechanic altogether and just go straight for generating Elven Wrath. So it is kind of good for that. It, it's you gain might better when you're in Elven Wrath, but you're constantly regenerating might. So it's not that big of a benefit. It's just it applies to melee attacks as well as ranged. You use ranged attacks really more for utility, uh, things like Shadow Dominate, Teleporting, Talon Strike outside of Elven Wrath, so you're not actually hitting people with your bow and arrows as much. There are some other secondary ben benefits that would be good for this, like gaining Wrath on every ranged kill. The problem is I don't really know what ranged kill it applies to. I From the testing that I did, which was not real in-depth, it doesn't apply to Talon Strike, which would be the most important one. And that would really only apply outside of Elven Wrath, so really go with whatever you want here. This one's the best combo for the set, but like none of the rest of these are, are very impactful. Uh, three Wrath per kill. This is the best one just because what the set really wants to do is to dominate captains rather than kill them. So gaining 30 Wrath on a captain kill would be great honestly, but a lot of the times you're going to want to dominate captains, so you might as well just have the general one. Having little bits of wrath income from like a uh, talent strike or whatever is a bit more impactful than just a captain kill, because your wrath generation is most important when you're trying to get back into elven wrath and you're just not in it. So the three wrath per kill is going to benefit you most from killing off grunts, that kind of thing. Reduce curse duration by 90%, still the best upgrade Poison really sucks for this build, but really only when you're either about to go into Elven Wrath or you just finished Elven Wrath and then you get poisoned. That could be very problematic. Getting poisoned really sucks, but cursed is way worse because poisoned does not interact with your wrath at all, and that's what you don't want. Uh, and then nothing is changed here. Star Claimer, Elven Wrath longer. That's that's kind of a staple part of the build. That has not changed. Uh, so damage up. I didn't go into detail here. I will now. Uh, with the last video, I was like, this doesn't matter. Uh, more damage for the Wrath Giver. This is where all your damage comes from. Healing for both the Dagger and the Bow. We're not trying to go for execution damage on Captains. We're only using the Bow for, like, utility. And honestly, for, like, Talon Strike, it's better if enemies don't die. We're, we're trying to gain Wrath from them, not actually kill them. So both of these are just good for just sort of gaining back health when you're in a pinch, but most of the time they won't come into play. Uh, armor and cloak, just extra damage here. Obviously, we, we want to do more damage. We're stacking damage. And then this one. Uh, I did some testing here. Uh, your followers are debuffed in the same way you are, and they lose health. And this health is a percentage-based damage that they lose. It doesn't matter whether you have this or not. They lose health the same rate. I actually timed this out. You're really not getting the value off of them being more defensive. We go red here. So let's look at skills. First, I'm gonna go over the major change. Really not much has changed here, but I've learned a lot. Uh, and that would be the upgrade to Critical Strike, and we're gonna go with Unstoppable. As long as your, your hit streak's above 20, Critical Strike increases significantly. Previously, I was using Elven Precision, and I think there are some holdovers from uh, the previous game, of which I was one of them, and got used to using this. I'm not sure if this applies to the Glaive. I've always treated it like it did, and the Glaive is what we're going to be doing most of our, if not all of our melee combat in. So if you are one who is particular about using this with the Glaive, then continue to use it. But generally speaking, I think uh, Unstoppable's better. Once you're in Elven Wrath, it's really not hard to keep up a, a hit streak. Having everything crit hit chance going up is much better than just your melee-based attacks. And then you don't have to worry about timing as well. Uh, this was ad advice by Leo that I, I definitely agree with, have tested both. Unless you were just very particular about timing up your strikes with Elven Precision, this is the one to go. So 
As far as skills, I'm not going to go over all of them. I'm going to go over the most impactful ones. We're going to start with Spectral Glaive because this needs to be get talked about. Leo uh, gave me the advice that they thought that I should use Mighty Swing because if you time it, it increases damage. And they were saying, well, if you just repeatedly use this, there's no real reason to try to go for Deadly Striker. And the other reason they said to do that is because Deadly Striker, the follow-up hits, can activate an execution cutscene as if you were using your regular strikes. The first hit does not, whereas there is a danger with Deadly Striker. Here's the thing, and I'll, I'll give you just sort of the TLDR. Mighty Swing, it does seem like it does more damage. Either it raises crit hit or it actually causes timing this out to do more damage. It does great damage. It does terrible DPS. So, and I haven't done scientific test on this because I didn't have to. I test, I've used both in several conquests and the difference is clear. Deadly Striker doesn't do as much damage, but obviously has more swings per second and is the superior DPS option. It's not even close. It's very easy to tell once you do these two that Deadly Striker has better DPS because you are swinging more per second. The difference between the two is still important. It's still important to know that if you do a single swing, uh, that's good for immediate damage and you are not in danger of uh, causing a cutscene because of execution. Deadly Striker does more damage and is more appropriate when their health is full, but if you just keep swinging and you cause them to get killed, then you're going to get in that cutscene and that's bad. The thing about Deadly Striker is, if you know what you're doing, you can both single charge and double charge your swing, and if you know which one is appropriate, then De Deadly Striker's better. It's essentially, as long as you know what you're doing, Deadly Striker's better. So I would encourage people to try out Mighty Swing, or at least try out the difference between single charging a strike and double charging a strike, so that you know the difference mechanically between them, because it's important. But once you know the difference, uh, Deadly Striker is the better option. It's really not even close. And the main reason why is because Mighty Swing is just gated by the fact that you have to charge up a swing, charge up a swing, and it's just strictly slower than just hitting somebody with your sword. And when somebody's at low health, I do use single charges. Regardless of whether you get the Mighty Swing upgrade and timing, it does more damage a single strike than the multiple strikes of Deadly Striker. Because it's not gated by you having to charge it up over and over again, the more times that you're hitting with this, the more efficient and superior this is as a DPS option. So if it takes you three to five times to hit a captain, you use Deadly Striker because it's just, it's gonna be faster than using Mighty Swing. Uh, but when somebody gets low, you either do one of two things. Either A, you're in the middle of hitting them and they become broken, you stop, swinging and you immediately interrupt your own attack with a consume and this causes you to then drain them instead of fishing them off you avoid the cutscene or b they start to get low you'll stop swinging and then you will just go to single swings but because deadly striker has a lot of rapid hits you get a better hit streak which is good because of uh, our critical hit upgrade that we talked about having a bigger hit streak and then you think about all the different damage buffs we get it's like I said before, TLDR, uh, Deadly Striker is much better DPS, but it's important to know the difference between single charge and uh, double charge. Okay, so now let's go to the next uh, most important skill that I learned about, which is Drain. The thing about Drain is that certain upgrades in this tree will apply to Consume, but certain ones will not. And that is important because most of the time we're not actually going to use Drain. If you look at like the cutscene of Drain or actually using Drain, it's slow. It's slow, it leaves you vulnerable. You certainly don't want to be doing this outside of Elven Wrath. So Consume is a safer option. Shadow Strike Tree, Shadow Dominate is much safer, although you're not gonna get any uh, upgrades relevant to Drain or Consume in this. So which of these happens when you use a Consume? Dominate and Quiver of Souls. Domination and Quiver of Souls both happen when you use Consume on a Grunt. And Quiver of Souls also happens when you dominate a Captain. Therefore, Quiver of Souls applies most often. Uh, domination obviously doesn't happen when you dominate a Captain because it's already happening. It does apply to Grunts, and it is sort of more synergistic with the build. 
However, so many different ways to make allies. We already have allies there in Conquest format. Uh, there are so many different sources of allies that I think this is a little bit overkill. And if we invest in Quiver of Souls, we can essentially replace a Consume with Shadow Dominate. And that's normally not a resource you would want to spend on creating more followers. With Quiver of Souls, you just don't need to worry about it. And then you can use your arrows much more liberally. That's sort of the downfall of Consume, is that Consume auto-aims based on where you're facing and what direction you're moving. And oftentimes, the game will just auto-target you to Consume a captain who is invulnerable. It's much more reliable to point at a target uh, there are lots of captains who are immune to arrows, so therefore you would have to consume them anyway. But I'm just saying, like, if you're trying to just get a drain buff off of a grunt and then start hitting a captain, oftentimes you are going to waste a lot less time by just going Shadow Dominate. And Quiver Souls basically means you're never going to run out of arrows. Constantly getting plus four arrows whenever you use a drain on a captain or a grunt. Uh, it's definitely better than Domination, though Domination... If arrows aren't a problem, and if you're just trying to fill the battlefield with more people, domination's okay. It forces you to use consume more in other situations where you might use shadow dominate. Bright Lord's Wrath is really good, and I have used it, but it seems like any of the consume upgrades override Bright Lord's Wrath. The only time you would get this is when you were dominating captain, possibly. And because you're just not seeing it from regular consume uses, you're just sort of wasting this upgrade. Uh, consume I just talked about. I go with Lord of Wrath because it gets you more wrath whenever you use it. You can already use Consume on Olog Captains. Not regular Ologs, but Olog Captains, you can totally use Consume on them without this upgrade. So, uh, and then Chain of Souls. Chain of Souls is good, but most of the time we don't need that much arrows if we're using Quiver of Souls. It's a potential upgrade if you're using Domination to sort of fill the field. Uh, Lord of Wrath is just your best bet. It gives you the most value off of dominating both grunts and captains. Just gives you a little more wrath when you use it. So, With Shadow Strike, Shadow Dominate's the best combination for Quiver of Souls. If you use a non-lethal Shadow Strike and follow up with a Ground Drain, then you can get positive net gain arrows. Uh, most people know about that trick. Uh, you basically just want as many Drain options as you can get in the skill tree because Drain is how we activate our damage buffs. Raise Shield's also pretty good, but it is somewhat situational in that whoever's attacking you has to have an attack that is counterable, and oftentimes someone will be attacking you with an attack that's not counterable, in which case this does nothing. And executions are really only valuable outside of Wrath, whereas otherwise you would be using Elven Light. Ground Drain's just a little bit useful in conserving your Wrath if a captain's on the ground or an enemy's on the ground and you can use it. Uh, also using sort of a Shadow Glaive into a Ground Drain can be pretty good, or Shadow Glaive into a Ground Execution can be a good strategy outside of Wrath. And the one thing I need to mention, if you didn't already know, is that you need to not select any upgrades to Elven Light for this whole thing to work. Uh, if you select any of this, then it's problematic for Wrathgiver. So you want to leave this blank. Talon Strike is basically an Elven Light, and that's that's what we use in that situation. I think this is everything I need to talk about with the skills. There, You can see what I put in the upgrades. There, there's probably some that are better, but those are the ones that are important to the build. Going over all of them is ridiculous, so I will not. So that's all I have to say about builds and equipment. As far as how did I get this stuff, I use Cheat Engine, and I am very soon going to make a video on how exactly to use Cheat Engine to get you these things, because there's plenty of videos out there, by the way, on the legitimate means to get this. Uh, apparently, like, using ground executions or any kind of executions really good for getting Wrathgiver. Less clear on what you actually need to do to get Star Claimer. Using the cheat engine is the quick and easy method to get it. It's really more about, like, how do you do it legitimately? Make sure to back up your save file. Uh, how do you replicate these features correctly so that you're getting basically the same thing that you would legitimately? I will be coming out with a video soon on how to do that because I get a lot of questions about that. And I think that's pretty much all there, there is to talk about. Uh, it's been a while since I put out a video, so if you're still around, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if there's more stuff you would like to see or different kinds of videos, let me know uh, in the comments or whatnot. Let me know what you think about this build. 
Uh, otherwise, we're going to cap it off with just some gameplay of uh, me doing a raid with this build. So, uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, goodbye!
your commands through. through. If I must, you'll never take us!
to seal your doom. You'll die in this throne room. Perhaps, but not today.